Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you a fantastic method of painting Angron, the demon Primarch of Corn, for Warhammer 40,000 by Games Workshop. Now Angron is one of those classic large red corn demons, so the methods we're going to be using here can actually apply to all kinds of bloodthirsters too. And a model like this is often very intimidating at first glance, because there is a lot going on there, but what we're going to do is break it down into bite-sized chunks to make it really accessible, so by following this guide you're going to get a fantastic result. And all the methods and techniques that we're going to be looking at here can be applied to all kinds of big monsters like this. We hope you enjoy it and we'll see you at the desk. large and quite complex miniature, so when building a model like this what you've always got to do is have a think about what sub-assemblies might be beneficial to painting the miniature. And with one like this, what we're going to do is think about what makes this figure intimidating and see if we can use the sub-assemblies to help out with that. Now what makes a model like Angron so intimidating is because everything's closely packed in, very intense almost, especially around the middle of the body. So what we need to do is to look to see if there's anything around there that we can separate to make accessing that detail easier. And what I mean by packed together is that if you take a look at the areas like on the shoulder plates, it's actually very close to the flesh. So for example, if we take a look just here, you can see we've got the main part of the body. And what I'm looking at is areas like this shoulder plate just here. Now having this stuck on means that you can see some of the flesh through the little gap, especially down there, but the gap is so narrow, it's gonna be really hard to get a paintbrush in there to actually paint it. So by keeping that separate, we can now easily access all of this and we can just glue that on later on. So that's why I've kept all the shoulder arms separate and the arm on top of the head separate as well. So it's gonna be much easier to get to that sort of thing. Whenever a model's really densely packed like this, that sort of thing is definitely what you want to take a look for as you're working out your sub-assemblies. Now in addition there's another one here which again comes into that densely packed detail and that is a chain that goes across the front of the body. It's actually this one right here and it kind of fits inside there hanging from his chest plate and well as you can see there's a lot going on there and if that chain's on there it's going to be difficult to paint that chest armour and it's probably going to break in the process as well so that's why we're keeping that bit separate as well. So those are the sub-assemblies I'm going to be using and with that in mind then what we can now do is undercoat the miniature and for this model what I'm going to go for is a grey undercoat so I'm going to use Mechanica standard grey. It's a great starting point for all the colours we're going to be using. Now you could argue that going for a red undercoat on the main assembly might be quicker and you could certainly go for that and still follow this video if you want to. However, I think in the long run, grey is going to be better for base coating everything else. So that's what I'm going to use. Go and spray these parts, and when we come back, we'll start painting. And here we are, the model's all undercoated, and you can see I've got the shoulder plate undercoated too, as are all those other little pieces. And so now we're ready to start painting. And the first thing we've got to do is work out where to begin, really, because again, that model's very intense, very detailed, and so we need to start out somewhere that's gonna make the process easier for ourselves. And two things are dominant here. What we've got is the skin, which is red, of course, and then we've got the armor, which is brass. Now, you could start with either, but what we're gonna do here is actually cheat a little bit, because if you think about it, if we painted the skin up to completion and then moved on to the armor, We'd have a process where we'd take quite a long time to base coat that armor because the intricacy of the armor moving around the flesh and with how difficult some of it is to get to as well. Likewise, if we did the armor first of all and painted that to completion, then painting the flesh amongst it is going to be a nightmare. So what we're gonna do, as I say, cheat a little bit by first of all, roughly base coating all of that armor. So very quickly to make sure it's all brass to make sure we get the color into all the nooks and crannies. Then once that's done, we're gonna move on to painting the flesh to completion. And during that phase, we're undoubtedly gonna get some of the red skin onto the armor. Armor. but it's okay because this means that when we come back to painting the armor, we're already gonna have all that brass and all the nooks and crannies, meaning that as we base coat it, it's gonna be much, much faster than it would be otherwise. So that's why we're gonna do it this way around. It means then we need to start out with some of that brass and specifically we want the color that's going to form the trim because there's actually two tones of the brass in this miniature. So the color I've picked out for this is Hashut Copper and to apply it, because we're being really rough, what I've got is a really rough brush. So this is a medium base brush here from Citadel that's seen a lot of use. You can see it's frayed all over the place. Doesn't matter at all for the purpose here though, it's just going to be able to cover quickly. So what we need to do is just get some of this onto the palette as ever to make sure it's nicely thinned down with a little bit of water. You don't need loads with a brush like this, so just a small amount mixed in there. And with that prepared then, all we've got to do is start looking for all the brass on the armor. And it's basically any brass that meets the flesh is what we're looking for at this stage. But you can of course block them in if you want to. So for example, if we take a look at the forearm, this armor panel we've got just here is an ideal subject for this. So what we want to do is make sure we work this color into those little nooks and crannies right next to the skin, not worrying if we catch anything else at this stage. 
But as we're at it, we may as well make sure we block all the armor in too. But really, we're looking at areas like around the back just here, you see, where that meets the flesh. I want to get into those little corners around there like that. Now, at the same time, I am going to do this onto the brass parts that are separate, so the shoulder plates and the armor on the back of the head. That's just because we'll have to base coat those later on anyway. So we may as well do it now whilst we've got the color out and we're using this brush. I've got all that armor base coated now and we'll leave it for the time being and move on to painting the skin and we'll come back to it later. But during the process of doing that, what you will have done is use quite a lot of metallic paint. So at this stage, there's gonna be a lot of metallic flecks floating around in your water. So definitely make sure you clean your water before you start this next phase, because if you don't, you'll get all sorts of bits of metallic paint in amongst the reds that we're gonna do. And red is where we need to start for the skin, appropriately with some corn red, and to apply it, go for a good large base coating brush. What I've got here is a monster brush from the Army Painter and a fairly new one too, so there's a pretty good tip on it. And with it, what we want to do is just get that paint ready on the palette, thin down as ever with a little bit of water to make sure it's nice and smooth before we start to apply it. Now throughout this phase, where possible, try to avoid getting it onto the armor if you can, but if you do catch it a little bit, don't worry about it. What we need to do instead is just make sure that all of the skin is an even red. So for example, if I start on the arm just here, what I want to do is just make sure I block it all in entirely like that with two thin coats to ensure it's nice smooth coverage. When I get close to the armor, I'm just going to be a little bit more careful, but not worrying if I catch it a little bit as I go along. Now we want to make sure that all the skin is red at this stage to set up for the different variations we're going to have on there on the different tones that appear on it. So that includes the more pinkish parts that appear on the wings around about here and also the darker parts on the back of the tail. So for the time being, just paint all of them with corn red. I finished base coating that red flesh there and you can see there are some bits where it's become a little bit messy because of the intricacy of the detail, in particular around areas like just there. But the important thing is that all the flesh is an even red. So now what we can do is start to introduce the other tones on there before we do any shading on it. And what we're gonna do first of all is start out with the darker red that tends to appear along the back. Now here what we need is a very dark red. So I'm actually gonna mix one. What I've got is some Death Reaper, which is an off black, so super dark gray, and also corn red once again. What we want to do is prepare this on the palette first of all, still using that monster brush and you can see I've got some of my Death Reaper ready just there. What I'm gonna do is just get some corn red so it's on its own, but also I want to get some that I can mix in. So we wanna get it on there, start bringing them together, and we're looking for a very dark tone, something like that, you see. So it's actually really near black, but it's got that hint of red in it. Now, once you've got that mixed up, as ever, make sure it's nicely thinned down. And before we apply that, we're just gonna make sure that we've got the regular corn red available as well, because we will need that part way through here. So let's make sure that's thinned down just a little bit too. So there we go. But what we're gonna do is start out with that darker mix. And as I mentioned, this is mostly on the back, in particular the tail. So what we want to do is just load it with some of this, then start applying it into this region. And what we're looking at is gonna be this sort of area around here. So on the top of it, where it's a little bit more scaly. So to block this in entirely, just bring it up to the edge, but not going round onto the underside so the red stays brighter on the underside of it there like that. Now, as you get up to the back of the body, what we need to do is to bring this up to the remnants of his backpack here, these vents that are around here. So we want to make sure we get this part where it's a bit more scaly around there, following that spine going down. But as you get to this side just here where it goes into the flesh, here we just want to blend it a little bit. So to do this, we're gonna need that regular corn red, but we're gonna start out with the mix. First of all, just put the dark mix on that area there like that. And whilst it's still wet, just quickly grab some of the corn red on its own and just go back and forth, just bring the corn red onto it. So back and forth there like that. And this way we get that nice smooth gradient between the two colors. And here we have that dark flesh now applied onto the back of the tail and the back of the model as well. And you can see we've got that nice smooth gradient between the colors going around there. And also if you look a little bit further to the base of the tail, we've also done it just going along that smooth bit there and around the end of it. With that done now, what we're gonna do is move on to adding the next tone onto the skin, which appears on the wings, sort of around the knuckles of them. So the very base of the fingers going into the membranes. And for this, what we want is more of a burgundy color. So what I'm gonna use here is some sword hilt burgundy. And the application is basically the same sort of thing as what we've just done in that we want to get that burgundy on there, but also have corn red still available so we can grab it and use it to blend the colors together. Now you can see I've got the burgundy just here and I'm still using that monster brush for this. Once again all we need to do is just get some of this ready and then the area to apply it is going to be around this region just here. So it's these kind of lumpy parts that we've got around here. What we've got to do is just work it onto these parts and make sure that we cover them around there. And then as we get to this sort of area here what we then need to do is blend it just there. So that's when it's time to go and grab some of that corn red and just apply it just beneath it and pull it into the burgundy. So there like that, so we get that nice smooth gradient between the two.
And there we are, I've finished applying that burgundy onto the front of the wings there. And you can see I've also just brought it a little bit back on the fingers going just along there to help blend it into those red parts a bit further down there. And with that done, we can now move on to applying our first wash onto the miniature. And what we want is a black wash at this stage for all that skin. So what I'm gonna use is some Oblivion black wash, but we need to be careful not to darken it too much. So what I'm gonna do is just take the edge off it with a little bit of Lamia medium. So it's gonna dilute the color of it, but not change the properties. So it's still gonna dry smoothly on the miniature. So you can see I've already got some of my Oblivion black black wash just here. And once again, I'm using my monster brush for this. What I'm going to do is just get some of the Lamia medium next to it. And we're looking for roughly 50-50, but erring on the side of a bit more of the wash because we want a fair strength to it. I don't want to make it too weak or anything like that. So you want roughly equal amounts like that. And then just bring them together and mix them thoroughly so you get that diluted version of the wash. So really well together there like that until you get to about this sort of strength, and then we're ready to start applying it all over the skin. This includes all different tones that we've put on there so far, so all of the red flesh, but also as you're going along, remember that brass armor is gonna get in the way sometimes, so don't worry too much about it if you do catch it a little bit, but just do your best not to go on it as best you can. But otherwise, it's just a matter of painting over to about this sort of strength. You wanna make sure it's not too much so it doesn't start running and pooling towards the bottom of the miniature, but you do need that dark color in the recesses. So you want to get it to around about that point just there and then move on. And once you have got it all over that, red skin, give it about an hour to dry. I've given that wash plenty of time to dry and you can see now it's given us some shading on the skin. You can see on the red parts, including the more pinkish parts that we got on the burgundy here and also on the dark parts going down that tail right there. And with that done, what we can now do is move on to the process of beginning to highlight everything. And the first stage for doing this is going to be to return to corn red, just to reestablish it as the mid-tone on the main parts of the body and also very lightly use it as a highlight on the darker parts of red. So what we want to do here is to dry brush it on. And because we're going to be quite controlled here, I'm going for a smaller dry brush here. I've got a small one from Citadel. And what we want to do is just set this up first of all for a soft dry brush. So just get a bit of paint on your brush, get some tissue, use it to work it in. So in this rounded motion, moving along like this so we can see what kind of point we're getting to. We want it something like that before we start applying it. And what we want to do then on the redder parts of the body, so for example, this arm here, is apply it as a soft dry brush. So pointing straight at it, go in a rounded motion like this and just lightly work your way around the miniature. Just being careful to avoid letting the bristles fall too much into the recesses. And this way you can see it almost layers the skin really and that is just re-establishing that main color on the more raised up parts of it and it's like this all across it even in his face just very lightly like this now as you get up towards the pinkish parts of the burgundy here just go up to where it starts to change color so about this point here and stop there but then otherwise carry on further down and when you get to the darker parts instead we're going to be much lighter so on this texture here what we want to do is have the color catch the raised up parts and leave it dark so when it comes to this area just instead revert to a more of a flicking motion like this just very gently going across it so that red just catches the edges and all of that texture. With that dry brush done, you can see now we've got a more even finish to the brighter red parts. And also we've got that nice highlight starting to appear on the darker red parts. And so now what we can do is move on to that burgundy because we need to do the same sort of thing there. So here it's back to the Sword Hilt burgundy. Again, using that small dry brush, we want to do the exact same thing as what we just did on the more red parts just there. So that soft dry brush, just to build that color back up, effectively layering it, but using the dry brush technique to do it a little bit quicker and to get a slight bit of texture on there for that sort of leathery skin. So what we've got to do is work the paint into the brush until we're at about this point here. Here, and then it's just a matter of applying it on these parts of the wings that we've got the burgundy color on. And again, we want to go for that rounded motion, just softly applying it around here to build up that color and then just slowly taking it a little bit onto the red, just getting lighter as you go onto it, almost flicking, just to help get that gradient between the two colors. And once that's done, you'll have that burgundy hue once again on the front of the wings, and we've still got that nice gradient between the two colors. And so now what we're gonna do is move on to concentrating on highlights that are going to be on the more strongly red parts, the brighter red parts, the middle of the body really is what we're looking at here. And what we need is some Evelson Scarlet now. And again, we're gonna dry brush it on, still using that small dry brush for the controlled application, because what we want to generate here is some soft highlights appearing on the muscles of it. So what you need to do is again, just set it up with some paint worked into the brush, really making sure you remove the excess. And remember just to work your brush along like this, so you can see what's happening and how much paint is on there. When you get into about this sort of appearance on the paper, that's what we're looking for. So that kind of 
soft appearance there. Because now what we want to do is to concentrate on the more raised up parts of muscles. So if we take a look at his arm just here, that means we want to go at it in that soft rounded motion and focus the color on this part here. And you can see the more of this you do, the stronger the red gets in particular areas. So what we can do is just maneuver it around, being nice and light with it, so it doesn't fall into the texture of all the veins and things. But this way, what we can do is avoid the recesses and steadily build up highlights in the smoother parts of the muscles. So areas like there, for example. Now as we get to more textured parts like the hands, what we can do is just lightly brush them back and forth like this, so we make sure we just get that raised up texture and pick out the fingers and the knuckles and things. Same on the face, where again, we just want to go lightly back and forth in this more textured area, just to make sure we pick out those raised areas. But really, it's just a matter of doing this on all these redder parts, making sure that we avoid the dark red parts and also the burgundy. With that dry brushing done now, you can see that stronger red starting to appear in all the raised up areas, giving us some nice highlights. And you can see we've got it on the arms just there. It goes on the back of the legs too. It's also on the underside of the tail, and we've got it on the wings as well, following the fingers going all the way down. And so with that done, we now need to use some Evelson Scarlet again, but this time in a more controlled fashion. Starting out by thinly glazing it onto these smooth muscles, just to even out the color and make it a little bit more intense. But then we're gonna apply it in a more precise fashion to be some sharper highlights on more distinctive features, such as around the face. Now we're gonna start with that glazing and so for this what I've got is a size one brush from Artisopus. So a nice medium sized brush with a good point on it. If you want to go for a Citadel brush I'd recommend something like a medium layer. It's that sort of thing like a medium sized brush and for it what we need to do is just get some onto the wet palette just there and having a wet palette really helps out with this kind of thing because it really helps balance the color correctly for it. What we're going to do is heavily thin it down with water, add lots and lots of water into it to get it really quite runny, going down to about this point here. You can see, you see just how thin it is. And then what you do is just remove the excess off on some tissue, so there's not really any paint on your brush at that stage, and just load up a small amount. And this way, we only got a thin amount of the paint there, and it appears there's nothing there. But as you can see, when I start applying it to the miniature, it'll thinly apply and help us to control the color in more raised up areas, such as this muscle here, where we just want to thinly apply it to this raised up part just around there like that. And because it's so thin, as it dries, what it will do is just fade away into the surroundings and give us that nice bit of intense color to get that nice highlight in that area there. So what I'm gonna do with this is look for every one of these muscles that stands out that was revealed by the dry brush and just work our way across it. So areas such as just along here too. We want to get a little bit down the front here, so a bit there. Just being careful of these veins that we've got in this area here, making sure it stays dark in the recess right next to it. So just a little bit there and a little bit there. That kind of thing there like that. Now once that's done, what we then need to do is a more controlled application of a highlight with this onto areas that stand out more. So sharper features and details. So for this, it's still the same color. You can still use the same brush provided it keeps a good point to it. Though, of course, feel free to go for a smaller one if you want to. This time, just make sure it's not quite so thin. So I'm just going in the middle of these two areas of paint that I've got to get a nice com a com combination in between, really. With it, just make sure you bring the bristles to a nice point. And then what we're gonna do is start looking for sharper details such as on the face. And what we want to do is follow along each one. So for example, just here, what we've got is the eyebrow where we just want to go across the sharpest part of it just there to follow around the nose. And we've got the wrinkles directly above the nose as well for that sort of snarling expression he's got where we just want to line across there. Same on the top of the head where it meets those cables from the butcher's nails. We also want to make sure we go around the cheeks. So we've got that bit just there around under the eye, even the lower eyelid, down the side of the mouth, all things like this that are sharper features just to help them pop out a little bit more. That stage is now complete, and so we're ready to start moving on to doing some finer highlights on the red parts of the flesh. And for this, what we're now gonna do is move towards quite a bright red, going into orange almost, with some Wild Rider Red. And then we'll need an actual orange, so here what we're gonna use is some orange flare, and that'll just be a fine highlight to finish the red off. But first of all, what we need is that Wild Rider Red, and to apply it, I've gone for a slightly smaller brush now. I'm down to a size zero for my soaps for this one. If you're going for Citadel, I'd recommend a small layer, something like that, for a little bit more control, because now, rather than highlighting every edge that we can find, and glazing and things. Instead, we're just going to do a fine highlight on the sharpest edges, the ones that are more prominent and stand out more. So definitely make sure that paint's nicely thinned and that you've got that good point in your brush because what we need to do is start identifying areas such as on the face where we're gonna be picking out things such as the base of the eyebrows where we want to go just a little bit along there and a little bit on the end of them. We also want to just follow this fine line where it meets those butcher's nails coming out the top of his head. So just very gently there along like that. But as we get down to the nose, we just want a little bit going to Towards the tip of it, so just a bit around there, 
a little bit on the wrinkles above it, so just there and just there. So you can see it's always just these very small amounts just starting to hone towards the sharpest corners to help them pop a little bit more. Now most of this is going to be around the head, but also bear in mind on the hands we can do a little bit too, such as on the knuckles where we'll just want to do a few little lines across here just to get that impression of some texture on there. On the hooves we can do the same sort of thing where the flesh goes around the openings for things like horns and things. So for example, just a little bit along there like that. And on the wings we do have these sharper ridges going across the very top. So we want to get some of these too. In this case just look for those parts that stand up and just very gently skim along each one to get that brighter highlight following each of these as well. And once that's done, we can then move on to some orange flare. And this is just gonna be a very fine highlight on this red flesh. So now we're just looking for the most extreme parts that are standing out the most. For example, just the tip of the nose. And we just want to add a little bit of this orange to those areas. So we're looking also at the base of the eyebrows. So just areas there like that. This little line right above the teeth, all these just fine sharp areas just to help them pop out. And there we are with that. The red flesh is now fully highlighted, but we've still got that burgundy flesh and also the darker flesh. And what we're gonna do now is move on to highlighting the burgundy. And for this, what we wanna do is go back to some sword hilt burgundy, but to create the highlights, what we're gonna do is introduce a light gray into it. So for this, I've got some cacaridon gray. And what we're gonna do is bring it in and start highlighting it using the same method as what we just did on that red flesh. So first of all, what we need to do is get our color and then we can start applying it. And you can see you've got the two next to each other on the palette. And using my size zero brush for this, and what I'm gonna do is just bring them together in the middle to start to create a highlight color in between. And what we're aiming for at this stage is a sort of pinkish purplish color, sort of like this, airing a bit more on the more burgundy side of things. So that's the sort of tone that we're looking for. Then what we want to do is to go a little bit further and create a light tone. So in this case, it's gonna be something a bit more like that. So there you are, you see we've got a nice gradient of the colors. Now what we're going to do is start out with this one just here, the one in the middle. So what we need to do is just make sure the brush is clean for this. And this is going to be a highlight following all the defined features, the things that stand out, the sharp edges, that sort of thing. Basically what we were just doing in those previous stages. And so if we take a look at those areas on the wings, what we're looking at is going to be these ridges around here where we just want to follow along the raised up parts. So along there, for example, following along each of these ridges going along here, but we want to follow it onto the fingers. And when it comes to the fingers, you can see there's a line there where the light is catching. What we want to do is follow that along until we start to go over into the red, at which point we're just going to bring it to a very light finish, just there like that. So it helps bring them two of them together. Now we also want to keep going around all the ridges along here. And as we get further up, that means following these sharp ridges on here, again, taking it a short distance along so we start to merge into the red areas. So around about this sort of distance just there. Now, once you've got that highlight done, we can then move on to the lighter color. And this is the one where we just want to be a little bit more controlled as to where exactly we're applying it, a bit more precise. We're going for the parts that stand out more. So in the case of these bits, it's going to be just smaller amounts following each of those, such as along there. On these sharp bits up here, it's a bit more towards these points. So we want to go there and then just bring it along that sort of point just there. Same along here. Again, just going along until we start to go over onto the red. So we help that gradient. And on the fingers going along here, same sort of thing, but not quite so far. This time we just want to bring it a short distance. So round about to there. And with that, those burgundy areas are now fully highlighted. And so we can move on to the other tone that we've got on the flesh, which is this darker red that appears on the back of the tail and going up the back of Angron. And to do this, what we're gonna do is a very similar sort of sequence, but this time leaning on corn red to begin with, and then introducing that gray. So it's gonna be Kakaradon gray once again. So what we need to do is set this up, and I've already got the Kakaradon gray on the palette just here, and I'm using my size zero brush once again. What we need to do is get some corn red with it. So I'm just gonna get a little amount of that ready. So there we go. And then what we want to do is like last time, bring in some of the gray to make a sort of mid-tone, something kind of like that. That's ever so slightly more pinkish hue of it. And then what we want to do is make an even lighter gray one for our finer highlight, which we can add in seconds. So what we need to do is get some more of the gray, bring that in next to it and make that lighter shade. So this time we're looking for something a little bit more this sort of tone here. So you see much lighter that second one. So just make a bit more of the mid-tone. There we go. So that's the sort of gradient that we're looking for there. So what we want to do is start out with a more reddish of the two. So we just need to load up some of this. And this is then going to be focused on the sharp parts that we can find on the back of the tail and on the back of the body. Now, when it comes to the tail, it's quite clear because what we've got are these spines running all the way down and we're aiming for this ridge that runs down each one, which some of that dry brushing has revealed. So we want to very carefully use the tip of the brush just to follow it down. 
to around about that point there. And we also want to follow down that central spine too. So that means we're going along there and then along there as well. Now, when it comes to further up the back, what we're actually looking at is going to be these vents on the almost backpack that's melded with the back of his body. So here it's gonna be an edge highlight around these features. So we're looking at this sort of area here. We just want to go all the way around these parts here. So you can see there's sort of the shape of vents that appear on the Space Marine backpack. It's going all the way around these. Now, once you've done that first highlight, what we then need to do is jump onto that lighter tone. So it's just a matter of grabbing that slightly lighter color on the palette. And then this one, you know, so we're instead just gonna focus a little bit more towards the tips of things. So it's gonna be areas such as just here when it comes to the spine. So just little bits there like that to make it nice and sharp. When it comes to the backpack, same sort of thing. Look for sharper corners such as at the top right here. And just apply a small amount on that edge. And with all those ridges now picked out, that darker flesh is now fully highlighted. And so what we can now do is move on to painting the membranes of the wings. And for this, what we need to do is start out with an off black that we can shade down a little bit with a black wash later. So for this, I'm gonna use some Death Reaper, but any super dark gray will do just fine for this. And what we need to do is base coat it with an appropriate size brush for the kind of area we're doing. I'm once again gonna use a monster brush for this and still a fairly new one. So it's got a pretty good point on it so we can get to the little corners, but you might wanna to switch to a smaller brush when you do get down to those areas. But for this stage, all you gotta do is make sure your paint's nicely thinned down, and then it's just a matter of applying it onto the membranes in between the fingers of the wings. So what we're looking at is this sort of area just here. Just need to very neatly block it in, being as neat as possible whenever you get close to that red. Once you've finished applying that base coat, the next thing we need to do is apply a black wash over the membrane to deepen them down a little bit and get some shading in the recesses and amongst all of the texture that's on there. And to do this, what we'll need is a black wash. So once again, I'm gonna use some Oblivion Black here, but this time I'm not gonna dilute it with any medium. I'm just gonna use it straight out the pot and applying it with that monster brush once again. All we're gonna do is load up with this and then neatly paint it over these membranes. And what we want to do is do each one, one at a time really. So on this one, for example, what we want to do is just smoothly paint it over just neatly like this, working it up to the red, not onto the red, just making sure it's not collecting too much so that it doesn't run and start pooling in any of the recesses too much. So we're looking for about this sort of coating here. It's just a matter of doing one at a time and then moving on. That wash is now dry, and so we can begin highlighting these membranes. And to do this, what we first of all need to do is just make sure that there's a nice even finish to it because the wash on such large areas can sometimes catch the light a little bit differently. So to fix that up, what we need to do is start out with a light dry brush using the same black that we used for the base coat. So in this case, that's gonna be Death Reaper. Then what we want to do is move on to a dark gray, and here we're gonna use some Dungeon Stone Gray, which is also gonna be dry brushed on. But we're gonna start out with Death Reaper, and for this, what I've gone for is a medium-sized dry brush from Citadel, so a good size for the sort of area we're doing. What we want to do here is a very light, very soft dry brush. So you don't need tons of this paint on the bristles. And when you're working it into them on the tissue, really work your way along like this until you're getting this sort of appearance here, you see. So it's very dry, there's not a great amount of paint on there now, so that's ideal for what we want. And all we've got to do is start going along the length of the texture. So what we're going to do is hold the model like this so it's nice and steady, and approach the brush at this sort of angle just here, and then just go across the membranes like this, always in this sort of direction. So this way we're catching that texture. If you go up and down instead, then what will happen is the bristles will run into the recesses. But if you stick to this direction, instead it won't fall into the recesses there, keeping you that definition that we got from the shading earlier on. Once that's done, we can then move on to a dark gray. So here I'm using some dungeon stone gray and what we want to do is a very light dry brush on the wing membranes now in the same direction as the previous one. And this way we'll start to get that gray catching the texture. So just gradually building it up, just taking your time. Bring that dry brush up to this point where we've got those soft gray highlights appearing. And then what we can do is add a sharp highlight to really finish this off. And for this, what we need is a light gray. So here I'm going back to Cacaridon gray. And this time to apply it, I've gone for a really small brush. I'm right down to a size double zero for this. And if you're going Citadel, you definitely want a small layer brush for this kind of thing, because this is just gonna be a fine highlight. Just a little bit of this color. You wanna be careful not to overdo it so as turning the wings gray rather than keeping them black. So you just need a small amount of it, make sure on your palette is thinned out so it's got some translucency there about it. And then what we want to do is start looking for sharper edges and tears and things like that on the wings. So a great example of that would be on the end of this one just here. You can see all those rips that we've got on the actual end of it. And what we want to do is approach with the side of the brush about 45 degrees from the flat of it and just gently skim across these areas just where they stand out a bit, just getting that brighter gray on there. And you can see what it does is just gives a nice highlight that helps that detail just stand out a little bit. 
Now we also want to follow it a short distance into the wing too. So in that case, just make sure that you angle the model so you're comfortable, which is often to paint downwards and towards yourself like this, and just gently apply a small amount just on either side of that rib. So just little bits there like that, for example, and just there as well. Now, as you move further down the wing, just look out for any ridges that are standing out more than others, such as this one just here, and just apply just a little bit towards the top of it just to help that texture pop out a bit more too. So there, for example, a little bit there, just a tiny bit there. It doesn't have to be very much, just a small amount. And if there's any rips and holes in it, also just get a little bit of that as well. And there we are, with that the wing membranes are now complete and so what we've done now is paint all of the flesh and also the wings too. So we can now move on to the next sort of thing which is going to be to start to base coat some smaller details and we're going to do some here that can all share the same sort of wash, so a black wash in this case. So what we're going to take a look at is the fur, the rags and also all those claws and horns that appear on the miniature. So we'll start out with the fur and the rags and for this we need a near black once again so we can use Death Reaper again. And then we're going to be moving on to all those claws and things and for this what we need is some Skaven Blight Dinge. Now we're going to start out with Death Reaper and to apply it what I've got this time is my size 1 brush so a little bit more control than the previous base coat that we were doing. And all we've got to do is just make sure that paint's nicely thinned and under control because what we need to do is carefully look around the miniature for these features now and the fur crops up all over the place. So what we're looking for is going to be areas such as this little bit of fur that you can see just beneath the arm of the wing right here and at this stage all we've got to do is block it in entirely. So just being as neat as possible as we get close to that red flesh to make sure we don't catch it but otherwise just making sure we base coat all of the fur. Now when it comes to the rags they're all around the waist and there's one hidden just underneath his arm just under here so look at this sort of territory around here. On the other side too there's some around here so be sure to base coat this at this stage as well. With all the fur and rags base coated, we can now move on to the next colour, which is going to be Skaven Blight Dinge, and this is for all the claws and horns. Now, some of them stand out quite nicely. So, for example, on the wings, you've got these ones that are sticking out the end, such as areas just here, and we just want to base coat all of them. There's also these ones poking at the top all the way up here, you see. So it's these kind of ones just there like that. But in addition, there are some that are quite hidden away and actually look like fingers on the wings, and that's these ones here. So we want to make sure we get these too. Now, further down the body, we also want to keep an eye out for any claws and things jutting out, and also we want to make sure that we get the hooves too so be sure to pick just pick out these little areas down here as well and there we go all those claws have been base coated as have the hooves down here as well and with that done we can now move on to adding a black wash onto all these details so we can do them all at the same time so remember this is going to be the fur and also all those claws and the black fabric for this we need a black wash so again i'm going to use some oblivion black wash here and once again i'm going for my size one brush to apply it now because we need more control as we apply it because we've got to make sure that we keep it only on these details and off everything else, particularly when it gets close to the skin. So what we've got to do is load up and then start painting it directly over. And so, for example, we've got things such as all these horns and claws, such as these ones on the front of the wings. What we want to do is apply a fairly even coat across all of them. So just smoothly applied so it settles all the way like that and runs into the recess details. Also, we just want to make sure it settles in that recess where it meets the flesh as well, so we get that nice distinction between the two. Allow that wash to completely dry and all those claws and all the fur and also that fabric. And once it is dry, we can then move on to highlighting all these details. And for this, what we'll need is two colors, starting out with some storm vermin fur and then moving on to a really light gray. So here I'm gonna use some cacaridon gray. But we'll start out with storm vermin fur and to apply it, I'm going for my size zero brush now. So a little bit smaller. So we've got a bit more control as we move into highlighting here because what we're looking to do is to pick out the raised details and textures of all these features. So just make sure your paint's nicely thinned and under control on your palette for the purpose. And also just be careful to make sure it's not overloaded here because what we want to do first of all is take a look at these claws. And we've got all these ones appearing on the wings. So for example, this one just here. What we want to do first of all is follow all those sharper lines that appear on them. So that means using the side of the brush first of all to go across the top all the way down to the tip of them. And then the same on the bottom as well. So following it just there. And then we've got to get this one that's on the side. Now, if you're very careful, you can go with the side of your brush and gently skim down it, but just make sure you're really steady, really balancing yourself so that you can just catch that edge and get that highlight going all the way down there like that. Now, as you get towards the base of it, just make sure you've got a thin amount of this paint on your brush and just very gently apply it onto the flat of the tip there. So it gets a little bit lighter towards the end. So just on that side and also on that side. And the same is true on all the claws around the miniature. Now, in addition, we've got the fur to do. And when it comes to the fur, what we need to do is just again approach using the side of the brush. So for example, this tuft just here, go in with the side of it and just skim along the length of it. So this way you'll just pick out some of that texture and give that a nice quick highlight there 
like that. Finally, we've got the fabric, and the fabric is a little bit tricky to get into, but again, what we're looking for is the texture and the edges of it. So if we take a look at this piece that we've got just around the back right in there, again, where possible, use the side of the brush to skim along with the outer edge, so we're looking at areas like that. But when it comes to the creases, instead we'll have to use the tip of the brush, so there's one just running down here, so just line up so you're painting downwards towards yourself, and just follow the very peak of that crease. Once that's done, we're then ready to move on to a fine highlight on these details using a lighter grey, so here I'm using some Cacaridon grey. And first of all, on all these horns and claws and things, what we're looking for is a finer highlight towards the tip of each one to give the impression of sharpness. So using the side of the brush, just gently skimming it on just towards the tip of it, just so we get that lighter grey just popping off at the very end of each one there like that. Now when it comes to the fur, what we need to do this time is just start looking towards the end of the strands, which is this part of the fur right here. Again, using the side of the brush where possible and just gently applying it just towards the end of each one. So we're looking at this sort of area here to get that lighter grey to finish those areas off there, just like that. Finally, we've got the black fabric, and when it comes to this, what we need to do is look towards the points of it, really. So on the other side, just here, you can see we've got that little bit of fabric right in there. What we want to do is, again, just look towards the point of it and just gently apply this grey just on the very end. And with that, all those claws are complete, as is all the fur and also that black fabric as well. And with that done, what we can now do is move on to painting that brass armor. Now remember, earlier on we did that rough base coat and now it's gonna pay dividends because what we need to do first of all is neaten it up. And because we've already got that brassy color on there, this is gonna be nice and easy to do. So what we'll need for this is to return to hash hut copper. And once that's done, we'll then move on to painting the second tone of brass, which appears on the inside of armor panels. And for this, we're gonna use some Spartan bronze. But first of all, what we need is hash hut copper and to apply it and going for my size one brush and really the main thing that we need to do here is to neaten things up so it's a matter of looking around all those armor panels that we originally base coated with this color and just make sure they're nice and clean and neat as they meet the skin so for example if we take a look at the armor that we've got on the well on this arm just around about here you can see there's some parts where the red is flicked up on the underside of the hand just there and so all we've got to do is just paint around that part to make sure it's nice and neat and it's really just this process all the way around for example on this forearm and once again what we've got if you look at the top here, you can see some parts where all the wash and things are splashed onto there from the parts when we're doing the red. What we've got to do is just paint straight over that. So it's nice and quick and easy to do, just to make sure all that's nice and clean. Now, in addition, at this stage, we need to keep an eye out for some smaller brass details, and that includes things such as little buckles on the leather straps. For example, the back of the calf just here, we want to make sure that we get these at this stage too. So just block those in there like that, and this one here as well. And in addition, keep an eye out for any brass that appears on the weapons. So for example, his massive chain axe right here, Want to make sure that we paint all the brass on this as well. Once that's done and the hashot copper is nice and neat, the next thing to do is to move on to a bronze colour. And here I'm using some Spartan bronze, and this is to colour the inside of the panels. So essentially all of the armour and all this metal detail, all this brass, just leaving that trim so it stays lighter. So any areas in the middle of armour like this, I want to block this in at this stage. And with that, we now have those two tones of brass on the model, and you can see I've been doing it on the sub-assemblies too, with a shoulder pad just here, painting in again those recesses in the middle of the panel. And with that done, what we can now do is apply a wash over all this brass, and here what we need is a dark brown wash. So I'm gonna use some battle mud wash. To make sure we don't darken things down too much, I'm gonna dilute it with some Lamy medium, just to sort of make it a little bit weaker, really. And we're looking for about 50-50 mix for it. I've got my battle mud wash just here, and I'm using the monster brush and the army painter for this. And again, what we need is a roughly equal amount there next to it on the palette before we start to bring them together. So there we go. Now, whilst I'm using this larger brush to get things going, it's a good idea to have a smaller one on hand for the more intricate details, because you'll certainly need to switch to it as you're going along. But here, the goal is to get as smooth an application as we can onto all this brass detail. So with that mix created, what we want to do is take a look at one panel at a time. So for example, the forearm just here, what we want to do is pick a starting point on one side of it, such as just up here, and then apply it as smoothly and as efficiently as we can across the whole area, so that we don't get any brush marks showing and get a nice smooth finish to it. So we just need to apply it all across the brass just like this. 
the wash is now completely dry and you can see it really does get a lot of definition in the recesses there. But now what we need to do is increase the contrast a little bit more and also brighten up that trim a little bit more by layering it. And for this, we need to return to hash hook copper. And I'm gonna be applying it with a size one brush, but you might wanna have a smaller one on hand for the more intricate details. Because this time with this color, what we want to do is just apply a thin coat of it onto the flatter, more raised up areas of that metal trim, whilst avoiding the recesses and leaving them darker. So to do that, just make sure the paint's nicely thinned down and a little bit translucent on the palette. So so about that kind of consistency there. And you don't need loads of it on your brush, but as you're applying it, what you definitely need to do is make sure that you're nice and steady. And if we take a look at the forearm armor just here, what it means to do is to look for flatter parts such as the top of this trim, and we just want to thinly apply it onto both sides, just there like that, looking to avoid notches such as that one there and skipping past it to leave it darker. But as we get into the recess directly beneath that line, you can see it's darker in there and we want to keep that. So what we're gonna do is just layer this flat part just beyond it, being careful to work around all the rivets and things so it stays darker in that recess. And this way you can see we get quite a transformation bringing that shine back, but also we retain the definition that we got from that wash. I finished doing that layer now and you can see it's returned that shine to the trim and it's got a really nice contrast now between that and the flatter panels. And so with that done, we can now move on to highlighting all this brass and for all of it, we can use the same color at the same time. What we need is a pale gold color. So I'm gonna use some glistening gold for this and to apply it, going right down to a size double zero brush because this is going to be edge highlighting throughout here for all the brass details. So it's all about making sure the paint's correctly thin on your palette, making sure it's really smooth and flowing well from the bristles. And just as importantly, making sure the brush isn't overloaded. So remove paint as you need to, to make sure your bristles are looking sort of like that. You see a nice fine point on there. And then it's a matter of looking for all the sharp edges that you can find on all the brass across the miniature. Now on a lot of them, you can actually approach that side of the brush and skim along them. So for example, on the forearm here, you can see it's very easy to get that highlight running across there. But as you get down towards the deeper brass that we've got on the flat panels, in this case, it's time to revert to the tip of the brush. And it's just a matter of just being as neat as possible and making sure you're comfortable and following that edge all the way around. Now this is also going to be the highlight color for the darker brass too and if you get any edges of that such as on the edge of this panel just here be sure to follow those all the way around as well. And with all that edge highlighting now done on that brass, the armor's finished. And so now what we're gonna do is move on to a completely different feature. And this is going to be moving on to all the leather that appears on the miniature, of which there's going to be some parts on the shoulders, but also there's quite a bit on the main assembly. And this includes the leather straps that are hanging from armor, but also the straps that are holding some on, particularly on the legs, so keep an eye out for those. Now for this, what we want to do is start out with a good base coat of once again an off black. So it's back to Death Reaper for this. And what we want to do, is just make sure we get a nice even base coat for this. So I'm going for that size one brush, all you've got to do is make sure you block it all in at this stage. And of course, there will be quite a bit of detail to work around at this point, so change brush as you need to, just be as neat as you can throughout. But for example, what we're looking for are straps such as these ones hanging from this shoulder armor. So these ones just here, all we want to do is make sure we block them in entirely. Once you've found all that leather and picked it all out, you're ready to move on to the next step. And remember, this does include the leather that appears on the weapon grips. So you can see, for example, on the axe grip just there, we've also base coated that. And so with that base coat done, now what we need to do is add a black wash on top to get that definition and shading in the recesses. So once again, we're gonna use some Oblivion Black wash here. Now I'm sticking to my size one brush to apply it, but remember, just change as you need to. But with this, all we need to do is apply it directly over the top of all the leather that we just base coated in. So for example, on the shoulder plate just here, we're looking at these straps. All we want to do is just paint it straight over, making sure to work it into all the nooks and crannies as we go along. That wash is dry, and so with that done, we can move on to the process of starting to highlight this leather. And if you look closely at the one on the box, it's actually got a greenish tint to it, which goes in really nicely with the verdigris, which we're gonna be doing later, and just ties it all up with a hint of green. Really nice contrast against all the red that appears in the miniature too. So what we want to do is introduce that. So what we're gonna use is some Incubi Darkness to start highlighting here, and to apply it, I'm going for my size zero brush for a little bit more control than what we had with that original base coating brush, because now what we want to do is start doing edge highlights on this leather, but we can do them fairly broadly for this first color because it is so dark. Let's make sure it's nicely thinned down as ever on your palette so you've got a little bit of translucency there. So about this kind of consistency is what we want. And then on all these straps, what we need to do is identify the edges on them and follow along. So for example, if we take a look at this one just here, it's just a matter of just using the tip of the brush and just gently following it all the way down. You can see as far as edge highlights go, this one is quite broad, but because the color's so dark and because I thinned it down, it's gonna fade into that surrounding black. So we just wanna make sure it continues to do that all the way around. 
In addition, keep an eye out for any creases and things that we've got, such as this one just going across here and follow that. And you'll also see this little bit of texture going along the edge too. We just want to follow any little notches that we've got there as well. So for example, these ones just here and just here. And with that first highlight now applied, you can see that green started to show through, but what we need to do is push it further as we move into further highlights. That's what we're gonna do now, starting out by using Incubi Darkness once again to lean on, but we're gonna start introducing a lighter gray to it to create our lighter highlights. So for this, I'm gonna use some Cacaridon gray, and what we want to do is set this up first of all using a small brush, so I'm right down to my double zero. See, so I've got some of the Incubi Darkness here, and I've got some of my gray here, and what we're gonna do is just start mixing them together to first of all create a slightly lighter grayish green tint. So we're looking for something a bit like that, and then beyond that, what we need is an even lighter one. So we'll just put a bit more gray in just there. And so you see by doing that, I've now got two tones that I'm gonna be drawing from. What we want to do is start out with the darker of these two ones here. So this one that we've got in the middle, and this is going to form an edge highlight on all that leather again, but this time sharper than the previous time we were applying it. So for example, on these straps just here, what we now need to do is just be really careful and make sure we're just on the very edge, just very carefully follow it all the way around with as fine a line as you can manage. So all the way along there like that, also looking for the creases and just making sure you follow those and just angle it as you need to so you're nice and comfortable, that downward motion painting towards yourself so you get that neat straight line and also just look for the little rips and things as well. So just making it a bit more like that. Now, once you've got that all the way around, it's time to start grabbing some of that lighter gray. And with this one, we're looking for the peaks where lines intersect. So this one, for example, we just want to introduce a bit of it into that area there, going a little bit onto the flat there like that. And that's really all we need to do with that second color. So now it's just a matter of taking your time doing this across all this leather, just being as neat as possible to get that nice greenish highlight showing through. And once you've finished applying that fine highlight, you can see that leather is done. And of course, in there we've got that nice greenish tint as well, which is gonna match nicely with the verdigris when we add that later on. But now what we need to do is start taking a look at some other smaller details. And it's gonna be things like cables and stuff. And this includes a lot of silver, and that's where we're gonna start. So here what we need is some surcoat silver, so a nice darker silver color. And to apply it, I'm starting out with my size one brush, but throughout this whole process here, there's all kinds of details in silver and we need to base coat all of them at the same time. So feel free to change brush as and when you need to based upon what you're doing, whatever you're comfortable with really. But what we gotta do is make sure as ever the paint's thinned and ready, and then you just gotta start looking for all these details. And to begin with, on cables, what we want to look for is any exposed interior to them where the silver's showing through. So for example, on this one just here, we want to get these ridges at this stage. But as I mentioned, there is quite a lot of silver to pick out here. So for example, we've got things such as the plugs that are in the flesh, like this one that's just in here. We've also got various parts of the butcher's nails that are silver, and that's these ridged pipes, such as this one going along here. We've also got a lot of chains on the miniature and a lot of silver detail on the ax, so we want to make sure that we get to all these at this stage. So it's all this kind of thing. As I say, it's quite varied and it's all across the miniature, so if you're not sure what to go for, then just check out the box artwork and that will guide you through it. But essentially, all metallic details like this, we need to base coat in at this stage. Once you've found and base coated all those small bits of silver, the next thing to do is to start picking out some pipes before we move on to washing all of this, because we can again wash all of it at the same time with the same color. And for the pipes, there are actually two tones to it. Around the head, there's more of a black. So for this, what we're gonna use is some Death Reaper. But then for all the other cables, they're much lighter with a sort of dirty gray color. Here, we're gonna use some Storm Vermin Fur. So we're gonna start out with that Death Reaper. And for this, I've gone down to my size zero brush because these cables on the head are much smaller, really. And so we want that control as we base coat this color. And what we're looking for is the smooth cables around the head, such as this one that goes down the center. You can see all the way down here, what we want to do is paint the rubber outer casing whilst being careful to avoid the silver that goes underneath it. Once you've got all those black cables around the head, we can then move on to base coating all the remaining ones using some Storm Vermin Fur. And this is for all of them that are scattered all around the body. And there we are, all those cables are base coated too. You can see we've got the ones on the back of the arms. There are some on the legs just around there and there are some going around the wings. So be sure to get those ones too because it's quite easy to miss those ones just there. But with that done, the next thing to do is to wash all of this with a black wash. So all these new colors that we've added can be done at the same time in one go. So we're looking at the silver here and also both colors of the pipes. And to apply it, I'm starting out with my size one brush once again, but as ever, just change as you need to throughout this stage. So what we want to do is make sure that we don't overload the brush this time because you don't want it to run out of control. In particular, 
it around the head because we've got all the butcher's nails coming out the back of his head just here. And you can see how they're raised up in relief against the red of his neck. So when you're doing this, you just don't want to overdo it with too much wash so it splatters all over the red skin of the neck beneath it. So just keep it under control, manipulating it around to get to about this sort of coverage across all the silver and all those cables. Once that wash is completely dry, we can then move on to highlighting all these details. And we're going to start out with those cables, beginning with the darker of the two. And for this, what we'll need is a dark grey. So here I'm going to use some dungeon stone grey. Now, once that's done, we'll move on to the lighter cables. And here we need a light grey. So I'm going to use some cacaridon grey for this. And then finally, I'm going to highlight all that silver. For this, we need a bright, shiny silver. So in this case, I'm going to use some mithril blade. But first of all, I'm going to use some dungeon stone grey. And to apply it, I've gone right down to my size double zero brush, because here we're looking to highlight the sharper features that appear on these cables. So these are going to be the ridges that are opening up where you can see the exposed metal beneath. It's that sort of thing. And so you don't need loads of this. Definitely make sure it's under control on the palette and that you've got that fine point on your brush. Then we're ready to start looking for these rips and tears in the cables. So for example, these ones we've got on the top here, we're looking at these spaces such as around here. And what we want to do is follow around each of these rips in the actual surface of the cable. Once that's done, we can then move over to the lighter grey pipes. And here we're using some cacaridon grey applied in the exact same way, looking for all those rips and tears and gently following around each one. And then finally, we need a bright silver. So here I'm using some mithril blade and this is to highlight all the silver. So this includes these little ridges we've got showing through the pipes, in which case all we've got to do is just very gently skim across them with the side of the brush just to pick them out there like that. But also for the larger areas, we want to make sure we edge highlight them. So for example, on the axe, it's a matter of just looking for those corners, just like when we're highlighting the brass earlier on, and just gently following around each one. I finished applying that silver highlight now and that stage does take a little while because there's lots of small silver details there, but you can see it makes a really dramatic difference to things, in particular around the head with all the butcher's nails now standing out. And speaking of the head, that's what we're gonna move on to finishing now because it's time to paint the details in the face. And the first of these is gonna be the tongue. Now for this one, a base coat of a burgundy. So I'm gonna use sword hilt burgundy once again. So same as what we used on the wings earlier on. But then for the wash now, what we need is a purple wash. So here I'm gonna use some drooky violet. But first of all, I'm gonna go for that burgundy. So some sword hilt burgundy and apply it using that size zero brush for this. Feel free to go for a small one, of course, if you want a little bit more accuracy as you're getting towards the back of the throat with it. But all you gotta do is get your paint thinned and ready as usual, and then it's just a matter of base coating it in. So all we gotta do is paint this detail at this stage, just being careful not to get onto the red flesh surrounding the mouth. Once you finish the base coat, you're then ready for some Drooky Violet. And I'm once again using the size zero brush for this. And all we're gonna do is just poke it along the tongue and also on the inside of the mouth as well. Once that wash is dry, we can then highlight the tongue. And for this, we're just gonna need two colors. We're starting out with a sort of pinkish kind of color. So here I'm gonna go for some glistening gums. So something lighter than the burgundy we originally used. But then what we need is a light bone color just to finish it off at the very tip. And for this, I'm gonna use some vampire fang. But first of all, we need that glistening gums. And to apply it, I'm going for the really small brush now. I'm down to my size double zero because we just need a little bit of this just to help it stand out. So you don't need loads. Definitely make sure it's thin so it's got some translucency about it. And then, what we want to do is paint it to a point going towards the end of the tongue. So what we're looking at is a line just running along here all the way to the end. So just along there and then mirrored on the other side. And then to finish off the tongue, all we need is a light bone color. So here I'm using some vampire fang and all we need is just a very small amount of it just around the tip. And with that, the tongue's completed. And so now we can move on to painting the eyes. And if you're not done so already at this stage, just make sure the eyes are really dark because what we want is some contrast between the darkness of them and the brighter parts that we're gonna put in, which are gonna be red. And for this, what we need is some Evelson Scarlet, first of all, followed by some orange flare, and then a very small amount of a pure white. So here I'm gonna use some white star. But first of all, what we need is that Evelson Scarlet and definitely stick to your small brush for this one. So I'm still using my size double zero. With it, all we want to do is to dot the eyes so we're getting some of that red showing through in the middle of them so they're starting to pop out. So let's make sure your paint's thin so it's gonna be flowing well so you have that control as you put this on because you just need a small amount of the tip of the brush. And it's a matter of just making sure that your hands are really braced and really steady, making sure you're really comfortable and then gently move in just to pick out the middle of each eyeball. Thank you. 
Next up, we need a bright orange. So here I'm using some orange flare. And with this, we just want to once again dot the eye, but this time a little bit of a smaller circle right towards the middle of each eye. And then finally, all we need is a very small amount of a pure white. So I'm using some white star here. And all we've got to do is just do a tiny dot in the center of each eye. Now those little dots are on there, the eyes are completed. So now we can move on to painting the teeth. And for this, what we're gonna do is start out with a really dark brown. So here I'm gonna use some cuirass leather. Then what we want to do is go through some lighter bone colors. So I'm gonna start out with some dragon fang and then move on to some vampire fang. But we'll start out with cuirass leather and I'm sticking to some of my size double zero brush for the base coat here because we want lots of controls with doing this. You need to be careful as we paint around the tongue. So definitely go for one way that gives you all that control. And of course, make sure the paint's thin correctly on the palette and that the brush isn't overloaded because as we paint this in, what we've got to do is just be really careful, particularly on the underside. You can see around here because the tongue goes very close to the teeth. Just really take your time as you're working around this area. Once you're happy with the base coat, you're then ready for some dragon fang. And with this, we just need to make sure it's thinned down with a little bit of water so it's a bit translucent and then apply it thinly down the middle of the tooth. So just there like that. And then around the side of it, always going down towards the point. So we're getting this impression of lines going down towards the end of each one. So just there like that. And it's just a matter of just working around each one doing the exact same thing. And then finally, we just need to return to Vampire Fang. And with this, we just need to apply a fine highlight just towards the end of each tooth. So just in this sort of region here, just to give the impression that they're really sharp. With that, Angron's face is now complete and the model is well on the way to completion, but there is a big detail that we've not yet touched and that is the blade of the demonic sword that he's wielding and that's what we're gonna paint now. And to do this, first of all, we need to get a nice smooth base coat on it of a near black, sort of grayish kind of dirty sort of black. So for this, what we're gonna use is some Skaven Blight Dinge and to apply it, I'm going for my size one brush and the thing about this is that we need to get this base coat as smooth as possible. So you absolutely have to make sure you thin this down in your palette to make sure it's nice and thin and go into this expecting to have to apply it as two or three very thin coats because this paint can be a little bit translucent. And just bear in mind that it is important to do the multiple coats rather than one though, because we need that smoothness on the blade for the glazing that we're gonna do later on to work. So once you've got that prepared, all you gotta do is base coat all of it. And don't worry so much about the skulls that are in the middle for the time being. Instead, what we're looking at is the actual cutting edges of it. So we'll look at this sort of area here. We just want to smoothly apply Apply it evenly across the entire thing, just being careful of the silver cross guard when we get down to it. And just bear in mind some of the blade does appear in the midst of the cross guard too, such as around here. With that even base coat now achieved, we can move on to highlighting the blade. And for this, what we're gonna need is two colors, starting out with some Storm Vermin Fur. And then once that's done, we then need a very light gray. So here we're gonna use some Cacaradon gray. And first of all, we're gonna use Storm Vermin Fur and to apply it, I'm definitely going for my size double zero brush here because what we've got to do now is a very sharp edge highlight on all the corners of the blade, going all the way around, including the part where it's cracking towards the base of it. So definitely make sure the paint's thin for that purpose. And just check to make sure it's really nice and smooth and that you haven't got it overloaded on the brush and then you're ready to start looking for the edges. Now the outside cutting edge is nice and easy to do because it's very clear and easy to approach it with the side of your brush and just skim your way around it, just following it all the way around there like this, even on where it goes into sort of inwards to there like that, just following that curve and on this side too. But there is of course that central ridge down the middle. Now, if you're careful, you can use the side of your brush again for this. It's just a matter of making sure you angle it so you're almost flat against the blade and just very gently just skim it along, very, very lightly following it all the way around. Once that first highlight's done, you're then ready for your second one using a lighter gray. So here I'm using some Cacaradon gray and it's another edge highlight, but focus now towards corners and points and things. So for example, on the tip of the sword here, you can see we've got these two points. I'm just applying it directly around those just to give the impression of it being a bit sharper and a bit more exaggerated really in this sort of area. So any kind of point you can find, such as this one just here and these spikes on the side of the blade, just apply this fine highlight around these areas. Once you finish with those highlights, we're then ready to move on to the flaming effect that appears down the center of the blade with all those skulls. And for this, what we want to do first of all is get a white in there so that as we move on to yellows, they're very bright and very strong. So in this case, what I'm gonna use is some white star and to apply it, I'm sticking to my size double zero brush because here what we need is a lot of control because what we're looking to do with this paint is to get it into all the little nooks and crannies. So kind of working it into those areas. 
So what I recommend you do is just thin the paint down a little bit more than we would normally would do for this sort of thing. So not quite a base coat really, almost like washing it, but not quite. So I want it to be a little bit more runny than I, as we normally would go for for the base coat. So it's this sort of thing just here like that, you see. Now the trick is to make sure you don't have loads of it on your brush so it doesn't run out of control. And when you're ready then, what we need to do is just start working it into this design. So we're looking for the recess I and mean, that is showing through the blade. So for example, areas like this, what we want to do is just run it in and let it settle into those cracks in the blade, where possible just avoiding the raised up area. Now don't worry about getting it evenly across the skulls because we're gonna be layering on top of those later anyway, but still for the moment, paint over them. But the important thing is just to make sure you get that white into all those nooks and crannies. I finished painting that white in there and you can see it's not entirely even over the skulls, but that isn't really what's important. What is important is the recesses and making sure they're a solid white. And so because they are, we can now move on to the next step, which is to paint some yellow over the top of this. And here what we want is nice bright yellow. So what I'm gonna use is some skulky yellow. And this is gonna be nice and bright, especially because of having that white down there first of all. So you see it's gonna be really nice and pop in this one. What we need to do is just make sure that it's thinned as ever, and we can actually afford to make it a little bit more runny than we normally would do because it's going over that white. So about this consistency is ideal. And just make sure you don't have tons on there so it doesn't go out of control over the sides of the cracks of the blade. And then all you gotta do is just retrace your steps and paint it directly over the white. And you'll see what I mean by just painting it over there. It covers straight away and it gives us that really nice bright yellow. Now that we've got that yellow in there, we can move on to taking it towards red. And to do this, what we now need to do is add an orange in there. So in this case, I'm gonna use some orange flare. And again, I'm going for my small brush to apply it. So still the size double zero. And now what we need to do is start to look more towards raised up areas. So in the case of the design we've got here, really that's the skulls mainly that we're gonna be picking out. So what I'm gonna do is just get some of this nicely thinned as ever and ready. And then what we want to do is almost highlighting in reverse. And if you think of it like layering or highlighting here, that's the sort of thing we need to do as we approach this because we're looking for parts that stand out such as these skulls and we just gotta pick out the raised up areas of them. So areas like there, for example, around the eye sockets, that sort of thing, and take it down the sides just so it started to go a little bit into that yellow, just to touch it a tiny bit. Now, in addition, we can add a bit of variety into the yellow with some of this orange. And if you want to do that, then what you need to do is just get a touch of this orange that's thinned down a tiny bit more and just let it run into some of these areas, these little corners and things, such as around there. Just let it mix into the yellow that we've got beneath it to get a little bit of variety in that color. Once you're happy with that orange, we're then ready to move on to the reds. And here we're gonna be using two reds, starting out with some Evelson Scarlet and then moving on to some Corn Red after that. But we need to start out with that Evelson Scarlet and to apply it again, stick to your small brush. And here we're looking to continue this process of almost reverse highlighting in that we're now looking for these raised up areas with this or slightly darker color really and picking those out whilst avoiding the recesses. So make sure that paint's ready and then we can start doing this and really it's once again gonna be following along those skulls where we want to look more towards the raised up parts of it and start to pick out the face on them. So on this one, for example, that means going on areas such as the brow just around there and around the nose and eyes, so this sort of thing here, all the while just making sure that we don't fall into the recess part and leave that more orange and yellow. And then finally, we just need a very small amount of corn red, and this is just to go around the eye sockets and around the nose, so just very gently areas like around here. With this stage now reached, we can move on to adding the glow that appears around these cracks in the blades. And for this, what we need to do is to go to corn red once again, but this time glaze it on. So to do this, what you'll need to do is make sure you really heavily thin the paint down on your palette. And I do recommend using a wet palette for this. It really helps with the control of this sort of thing to use a wet palette. And so what we need is a bit of corn red. So there we go. And then, as I mentioned, we want to really heavily thin it down. And I mean a lot of water here to make it really quite runny. We're looking to bring it right down to about this sort of weakness here, you see. So it's almost starting to look like a watercolor paint, really, with the amount of water I put in there. But then what we need to do, is we'll just make sure that only a small amount is on our brush at once, because the idea is that when we apply it, we get a very thin film of the color, sort of like that. And then we build it up through multiple coats so it gets stronger and stronger. So what we need to do is get that loaded up then, and you can see the really, really important thing is to make sure there's not tons of this paint on my brush so that it doesn't hold together and do any bubbles or lumps or anything like that. And then what we do is look for where the crack is and just apply it around the outside of it. So for this first coat, what I'm gonna do is just thinly apply it around this area here. Now you can see it's so thin that it's drying very, very quickly, which is ideal for what we want here because that's just how, well, how thin and how narrow this layer of paint is on the actual blade itself. 
I'm going to do it again on the other side. So we're looking at around here now. So this time I'm going to start from the top and bring it down. So we're looking at starting around here and gently applying it into this region just here. Now you'll notice with this first coat, it barely looks like anything is happening, but that's ideal because as we then move in for a second coat, the color is going to start to build up in strength. And this way we can keep it under control. So for that second one, I'll start applying it around here. And again, just manipulate it around all those cracks, just bringing it around this part here. And now, we're starting to get a difference appearing in the color of the blade. So you can see on there now, we're starting to get a subtle red. On this side, I just need to pull it down the other side again. So it's gonna be going down there. So again, just following all those cracks all the way around. And there we go, we're starting to get that red building up. So essentially, it's just a matter of doing that multiple times until you're happy with the strength of the glow. And in this case, it's gonna take something like four or five coats, but just remember to keep each one thin, just gradually build it up. And as you do each layer, just gradually get it closer and closer to the actual crack so that the strength of the color gets stronger the closer to the crack we get. When you're happy with that glow, the next thing to do is to continue with corn red, but this time applying it as an edge highlight around those cracks, just to get a little bit of that red sort of seeping around the side of it, like a little bit of light, that kind of thing. And to do this now, go back to a really small brush. I'm back to my size double zero for it. And it's just a matter of making sure that paint's really thinned and under control, because now we've got to work our way around all that crack texture that we've got around all these skulls and things. So what we're looking at is this sort of area just here and using the tip of the brush, you just wanna very gently follow that edge all the way around as neatly as you can. And with that, the sword is now complete. And you'll notice there's also been another big change on the miniature, and that is the armor, because now I've glued it on along his back. Now, I just want to point out, I have not glued on the skulls that are on chains that go on his chest. That's because in the next part, we are going to have to access that belt buckle almost. He's got hidden away just under there, because now it's time to do the verdigris that appears on the World Eater symbols. And to do this, we're going to start out by glazing on a very a bit of a thin mix, really. And what it is, is some Lupercal green, which we're going to dilute with some Lamia medium to turn it into a wash. So to do this, I'm going for my size zero brush because you've got the two ready just here. I'm going to start out with some of that Lupercal green on the palette. So there we go, just get a good little dollop of that. And then we want some Lamia medium. Now the idea here is that we're going to go into this with multiple coats, gradually building up the color. So we want it to be fairly weak. So be generous with the amount of medium that you get on there and just get it next to the color. Then just grab a bit of that color and start pulling it into it. And what we want to do is create a well, almost a wash really of around about this sort of strength. So not super strong, you see, fairly weak, but ideal for what we want to do here because we can do it with multiple coats. And the idea with this for the first coat on these World Eater symbols is to apply it across the whole of the world that appears on it. So on this one, for example, what we want to do is just run it over so it stains both the land masses and also the oceans in between them. So just with a little bit of that green and also settling into the corners where it meets the teeth. Now we want to go all across it at this stage and also as we go off the world, we want to go around the side as well. And that means just bringing it around into areas like here, just letting it go to the recesses on these parts too. Now in this particular larger shoulder plate, don't go right into that corner, just bring it up to around about there, then just quickly wash your brush, make sure it's damp and just use it to pull it down a little bit. But when it comes to all the smaller ones, just make sure you go across the whole area to stain it with this first subtle tint of green. I've got that first coat applied now and just want to quickly point out, I've also done it on the ax just there where all those skulls are. We want to build that up too in the next stage, which is to get the exact same mix and apply it again. Only this time on the World Eater symbols, we're now looking to avoid the land masses. So it means applying it into areas such as around here. And just like before, we want to make sure that we just draw it out into the surroundings by just washing the brush, making sure it's damp and just pulling it down a little bit. When it comes to the actual world, we're just looking for the oceans now. So it's a matter of just running it into areas like this to stain them with that stronger green. As I mentioned, on the axe too, we want to make the area with the skulls a bit greener too, so be sure to do a second coat in this area as well. And there we are, and that green is now stronger, and so what we can do is move on to finishing off the verdigris, and for this, what we need is some very bright bluish green, just little bits just to help really make it pop. And to do this, we're gonna mix a color. What I've got is some Cabalite green and some Araman blue, and once again, I'm gonna thin them down with some Lamia medium to turn them into sort of a wash. But first of all, what we need to do is mix up the color. Now for this, I'm using the size double zero brush, and we'll start out with some Cabalite green on the palette. So there we go, we don't need loads of this, so that'll be fine. But then what we need is roughly equal amount of Araman blue, we just need to mix them together and this will give us a really lovely sort of bluish greenish kind of color. So there we go. Then what we need to do is thin it down with the medium just like we did in the previous stage. So once again, it's a matter of just getting some of this onto your palette and being quite generous with it too. 
So just a little bit more than that, I think. There we go. And then mixing in some of that color into it to create this very bright color. So that's what we're looking for here, that sort of aquamarine kind of color. Now with this, we just need small amounts of it now. And the idea is to run it into some of the recesses, particularly around that world symbol that appears on him. So for example, on here, what we're looking at is areas such as around the side. So we just want to dot it right into this corner to get that nice bright color appearing in areas like there. So just run that in there like that. Also on the actual planet itself, around where the world bits are, you know, around these land masses, we also just want to dot it into corners on these and just gently follow it around. With that, the verdigris is done, and so now we can move on to painting all those skulls that appear on Angron. And for this, what we're going to concentrate on are the skulls that are on Angron himself and not the ones on the base, because when it comes to those ones on the base, it's actually easier to paint them as a part of the basing process. And if you do them now, then actually it's a real pain to actually work around them as you paint all the details on the base as well. So do them later on when you're doing the rest of the base. But for the skulls on Angron, what we want to go for is some quite pale ones. So for this, what we're going to do is start out with some Griffin Claw as a base coat, then wash over them with some battle wash. But we'll start out with that Griffin Claw as the base coat and to apply it I've gone for my size zero brush here for a bit more control because we want to make sure that we're nice and neat as we block this in on all of them. And there are a fair few skulls that appear on him and remember there is that separate piece of the chains where there's some on there as well. But all you got to do for this first step is well just block them in really so it's a matter of just making sure you're nice and steady and just taking your time colouring each one in to make sure you get a smooth base coat before you move on to the wash. Once the base coat's done, you're then ready to move on to a dark brown wash. And in this case, I'm using some battle mud wash. And all you've got to do is apply it directly over each skull, just being sure to work it into all the eye sockets as you go along. The wash is dry, so now we can move on to finishing off those skulls. And for this, first of all, we need to return to Griffin Claw to layer them to make sure they're nice and neat before we then move on to a highlight. And here we need a near white. So for this, we're going to use some ivory tusk. But first of all, what we need is Griffin Claw. And to apply it, I'm going for the size zero brush here. And with it, what we want to do is apply this color onto the flatter parts of these skulls whilst avoiding the recesses. So things like eye sockets, that kind of thing, so that we retain the definition that we just got from the wash. So once your paint's thinned and ready, all we need to do is start doing that. And so if we take a look at these ones that appear on this crest above his head, what it means to do is to look for ones such as this skull right here. And we just want to apply this color onto the flat of it whilst carefully avoiding that crack that goes down the forehead. So we're looking at just along there like that. And we want to follow it around the eyes. So just picking out the brow and around the eye sockets, around the cheeks just there, a little bit on the nose, a little bit on the teeth. And there we go. So it just helps that detail pop out now, makes it cleaner, and then it's ready to be moved onto a highlight. And then finally, what we need is some ivory tusk to highlight these skulls. And with this, just go in with a small brush, and I'm using my size double zero here. And what we need to do is first of all, just work our way around the face. So that means going around the eye sockets and across the brow, around the nose, and then just picking out some of the teeth. Then we're looking for any cracks. We just want to outline those. So a little one such as along there. And then finally, if you want to highlight the top of the skull, just thin it down with a little bit more water and just thinly apply this color across the very top of it. So just long areas like there and just there. Now with this done, the miniature is ready to be based. And as ever, it's entirely your choice what basing scheme you go for, but in this case, I'm gonna be going for a grasslands base. And with that, Angron is complete and ready to claim skulls in the name of Corn. So as you've seen when painting this model, because of all that intricate armor, it was actually a good idea to start out by base coating the armor so that we can get into all those little nooks and crannies on it, and then go onto the flesh to bring it to completion, and then return to the armor afterwards, because this way it's much quicker and much easier to neaten it all up before we start painting that in detail. Now following this method, you'll find is much quicker than completing one or the other to completion before moving on to the next one. So it's definitely worth bearing this sort of thing in mind, because it can easily be transferred to loads of other large monsters that are wearing lots of armor too. Anyway, have fun painting Angron, and we'll see you again very soon.